Hello and welcome to the video. Today I got Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge with me and today we are going to install and review Android 9, Android P for the Samsung Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge. So first of all guys, I'm really sorry for this uh, broken device here with this white uh, line over there. So I dropped this phone again like the fifth time or so. Um, but yeah, I'm really sorry for that. And another thing which we need to do is to thank Ivan Meller or however he's called because he is the guy who brought Android P to our Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. So big thanks to him. Right guys, so today we are going to install and review this ROM on our Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. I will split this video into two parts as always. So in the first part, we are going to install this ROM on our Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge and in the second part of this video we are going to take a short look on android p on the samsung galaxy s7 edge right guys so now let's start with the installation part right guys so before we install android p on your samsung galaxy s7 or s7 edge there are a couple of things which you need to do first so the first thing is to download the rom of course so you need to download the rom and the gapps package to get all the uh, Google stuff working on your device so like the play store like google chrome and so on and you will also need to install TWRP on your Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge first. So if you haven't done that already, there are a lot of videos on YouTube showing you how to install that on your Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. And yeah, right guys. So the first thing which you need to do in order to install this ROM is to power off your device and boot to the TWRP recovery. So basically say power off, let the phone shut down and press the volume up button, the home button and the power button to get to the TWR pre-recovery. So press all of them at the same time until you see this boot logo. Then you need to release these buttons. Right guys, here we are in TWRP recovery. The first thing which you need to do is go to the vibe section here and perform a normal factory reset. Then you need to go back, go to the install section here and locate your ROM where you have stored it in your device. In my case, it's in a downloads folder here and this here is the ROM, it's called Lineage OS 16. So basically press on it and swipe to flash. So this process could take like one or two minutes, you just need to wait. Right guys, so as you can see the ROM is installed now and the first thing which you need to do is to go um, back, go to reboot and reboot to the system. And if TWRP asks you to install the TWRP app, say do not install. So right guys, now we have installed the ROM on our device, but we haven't got the Play Store on board. So the first thing which you need to do now is to um, let the ROM boot and then we are going to uh, going to boot the TWRP recovery again and install the GApps to get the Play Store. So first of all, let the phone boot. So as you can see guys, the ROM boots up now, but we don't have the Play Store on board. So the first thing which you need to do now is go to back. Go to the um, TWRP recovery again, so shut the phone down, press the volume up button, the home button and the power button at the same time. When the phone is turned off, so press all of them at the same time. And let the phone boot up to the TWRP recovery. Right guys, so here in the TWRP recovery you need to go to the install section here and locate your GApp. So in my case it's located in the SD card and this here is the GApp. You can download them from the description of this video of course. Um, and yeah, now you need to swipe to flash. So this process could also take like one or two minutes or maybe a little bit longer. So just wait until the installing process is finished. Right guys, so the installing, installing process of the GF is also finished. Now we can go back and wipe, um, do a normal factory reset again, but you don't have to do that. And then say reboot to the system. And if TWRP asks you to install the TWRP app, I'm not quite sure if you can see it, um, say do not install. 
Right guys, so now the installation process is completely finished, now we just need to wait until the phone boots up. Right guys, now we've installed the ROM and the GAPs are also there, so now you need to set up your phone, so let's do that quickly, let's say start. Let's say skip here because I don't have any SIM card in there. Let's connect to our Wi-Fi. Okay, let's say don't copy data. Now let's sign let us sign into our Gmail account. Next. Accept. Um, as you can see, it asks us for our fingerprint. So let's try that if it's working or not. Let's say next. Fingerprint and pattern. Okay, here we go. And as you can see, it seems to work quite nice. Next. Skip. No thanks. And here we go. Right guys, so this here is Android P on the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. As you can see, you got this new notification panel here, this new launcher, um, this new recent apps section here. So there are a lot of things which are new in Android P. And now let us take a look at this ROM. So guys, first of all, this ROM is not as stable as all of the TouchWiz ROMs which are out for the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. So this here is based on AOSP, this is Lineage OS 16 and it is not as stable as uh, any other TouchWiz ROM. Um, but it's still ready to be used as a daily driver because there are less bugs, but you can face to some other bugs here and there and... Um, yeah, so you can face to some unexpected bugs. Right, so let's um, do a normal bug test. So first of all, here the camera. As you can see, the camera is working quite well. Um, it's normal Google camera with uh, less functions here. As you can see, you got all that standard options here. The front cam is also working really nice. And yeah, we've also got the Play Store on board as you can see, so let's check if that's working with the normal G apps. And as you can see, it's working, we can download any app here, so let's try that. Let's try to install Instagram, for example, and you can see that it's installing here. And right. So the SIM card is also working on this ROM, so you can make calls. I'm not quite sure if uh, VO LTE is working or not, um, because I don't use this in my country. But the mobile data is working for sure, the uh, Bluetooth is working for sure, the Wi-Fi is also working for sure, and so on. Um, the browser which we get on this ROM is... Um, quite okay but it, I but I would recommend you to install Chrome or any other browser and yeah this this here are all the apps which we got on this ROM so you get the normal settings app the recorder app which is really nice so you can record your screen with this app and you can record some sounds um, the Play Store the phone app which is still the same um, the music app which is also still the same. The messaging app, Instagram, which we have downloaded from the Play Store is there. Um, the gallery app, the files app, emails, contacts, clock, camera, calendar, calculator, and the normal browser. So you can see that almost all of the apps are still the same. Um, so 
the apps are still the same so there are no changes but the system itself has got some big differences for example you can see the new uh, recent apps section here it's uh, really different now you have to scroll vertically here or i mean horizontally and on the left you got your um, clear all button so i personally think that this recent apps section here is much harder to use than on Android's uh, Lollipop or Nougat or Oreo for example because this here is I don't know it's not easy to handle and um, right so you also got a new notification panel here so there are I mean as you can see it has got a new diff a new look here and I mean it gets a new look with all with any new android version and this time it has got a new look again you can see that the um, items here the toggles here are rounded now and the bad thing here is that if you pull down notification panel once you cannot exit to the settings from here so you need to pull down a notification panel twice in order to go to the set to the settings here and another thing which is really really dis disappointing is that you cannot switch your network connection directly from a notification panel so on android lollipop an android marshmallow an android nougat and an oreo you are able to change your network connection directly when you press pressed on this text over here but now it doesn't work um, so this is really 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 disappointing and yeah another thing which is not that nice is that you have a black bar at the top here this is made for the fonts with uh, a notch there but I mean it does not look nice on fonts without a notch to be honest right so they've also added something called manage notifications just like in touch with um, here you can go to your uh, notification settings directly from this shortcut. Right, so the battery life of this ROM is not the best, so of course you cannot uh, expect the best battery life on AOSP ROM, so they, they are not made to get a really good battery life, but I'm also sure that the developers will improve this ROM in terms of performance, in terms of battery life and so on, so if you want to get the best camera quality, if you want to get the best um, performance and battery life, you should not install this ROM because this here is not a, an official TouchWiz based ROM. This is built from uh, the normal Google source and um, it is not as stable as the TouchWiz ROMs. So this is basically just to get the latest version of Android on your Samsung Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge. Right guys, so this should be it. If you liked this video, give a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video as always, give a thumbs down and yeah, peace out.